When most people think about the game of charades, they picture a fun-filled family moment that may last an hour or two. However, when you have a non-verbal family member, you find that light-hearted game turns into your whole life and there is no escaping it. When I was five years old, I was still learning how to read and write, but unlike other five-year-olds using crayons, I was spelling out my words on a wooden alphabet board using my index finger. It was my first ever communication device. As you can imagine, it was a drawn out and frustrating process. I mean, no five-year-old child has the cognitive ability to spell out everything they want to say. My mother would pick me up from school and ask me what I did during the day. And with excitement, I just pointed to the letter H. Mum then proceeded to list every school activity that started with H. Horse riding? Nah. Hydro swimming? Nope. Well, you didn't hand write. And this game of charades lasted 15 minutes until my mother finally worked out healthy Harold the giraffe came to school that day. My mother derived this whole conversation starting with the single letter H. Go mum. You might start the day by checking Facebook on your smartphone. Find yourself apologising as you step around the automatic vacuum cleaner. And then the fridge reminds you that you need more milk. Whether it's in our social, academic or business lives, the advances in technology have dramatically improved our efficiency and our way of living. What if the use of technology was the only means that gave back an individual's identity, humour, speech and movement? For people who have a severe physical disability such as myself, technology for us is the freedom to express ourselves. For me, it is vital. I'm a graphic designer, website developer and photographer. I am able to be fully independent in my work environment, from using a MacBook for my graphic design and website development, to securing my SLR digital camera to my wheelchair. For me, being independent in my business life means so much. At school I was fortunate to have a series of communication devices that, as they evolved, gave me a voice and allowed my sense of humour to escape. But let's not forget, when I was using these devices as a teenager in the early 2000s, this was when mobile phones were the size of house bricks. Back then, technology created for the sole use of a non-verbal person was almost unheard of. Not only are some people uneasy when they meet somebody with a severe physical disability, but they can also be confronted by the communication devices they use. I have a pretty warped sense of humour and that helps me deal with some of the reactions I receive from the public. You see it on their faces as they're walking towards you. Ah shit, a wheelchair is coming. What do I do? What do I do? And they try to get out of the way and make a clear path, but I counteract it. So we get into an awkward zigzag walk happening. And 90% of these encounters end up with both parties laughing, which leads them to feeling confident enough to start a conversation with me. I find humour is the best way to put people at ease and an advanced communication device has made these interactions a great deal easier. Finally, the release of the iPad was a game changer. In my family and friends' eyes, it was the best invention ever because it allowed them to hear at least 50% of what I would like to say. Anyone who knows me knows how much I love music and going to gigs, but simply watching music was never satisfying enough for me. I've always wanted to be on stage, performing like my rock and roll musician friend Steve Balby from Noiseworks. Every time I watched Steve on stage, I could hear my inner musician screaming, you need to play music and perform. However, my logical side just dismissed that idea as a result of my physical limitations. At the age of 24, I was lucky to cross paths with Dr. Jordan Newen at a conference. He was delivering a presentation about his mind-controlled wheelchair. And at the time, Jordan was predominantly working with quadriplegics who had the ability to talk and didn't jump around quite as much as me. I didn't know he'd never conversed with a non-verbal person with cerebral palsy before. He later confessed after our meeting his perspective drastically changed when he realised there was a whole different level of people with disabilities that he could work towards assisting. Jordan and I became really good friends and this is where the craziest adventure began. We went to a few music gigs where he witnessed firsthand how much I wanted to perform. And a few months after one gig, the phone rang. The project was to play classical music at the Sydney Opera House with the Australia Piano Quartet, with the first ever eye-controlled instrument from Psykinetic. 
Now, I hadn't used eye-controlled technology before, and I knew absolutely nothing about classical music. Yeah, I was sitting there thinking, how are we going to make this happen? It's classical music at the opera house. I picked up the software really quickly. However, I still needed to be taught how to play classical music on the instrument with a seemingly impossible deadline of four weeks. Time to bring in the quartet. This is when I started to build my friendship with Tom, Beck and James, with James taking the lead as my music teacher. On day one, Jordan whispered to me, do you think we should give James a brief on your cerebral palsy? And I replied, no, nah, he looks reasonably smart. Let's let him work it out for himself. <laughs> that was the best thing we could have done because straight off the bat, James pushed me to my limits and beyond. He even yelled at me because I was having involuntary muscle spasms and classical musicians require complete control. I really enjoyed this process. I was laughing in silence. I continue to teach James about cerebral palsy and humour, just as much as he teaches me about music. I found a new quirky friend within James. Our first performance went really well. It was a beautiful collaboration of classical instruments that are hundreds of years old with Psychonetic's brand new instrument. And if a standing ovation is anything to go by, I think we pulled it off. So, from spelling out words with a wooden alphabet board to performing with an eye-controlled musical instrument. The advances in technology in my lifetime have been swift, providing opportunities and increasing independency for individuals like myself. Not only does technology continue to assist me with my work and communication, but in the future, I can imagine a time where I might be able to drive my wheelchair into a car and have it drive me to my chosen destination. And I can't wait for that day.